Uh, today, on this Friday sermon, I'm trying to just to look at one particular word, which is in the verse that I have recited. Allah is saying, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattakum. Oh, you who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasting is prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who were before you. Allah uses this word of fasting here, the term siyam. So the term siyam is the key word of this ayah. It's the central the center of the discussion is Siyam. Then, I'm trying my best, inshallah, to define that word. If we get the definition of Siyam, then inshallah after that, we know what the Siyam is. And uh, to define that word, there are many ways that you can think about it, but now, I'm just picking up one angle, which is to compare between the word Siyam and the word Saum. Both of them are mentioned in the Quran in many times, but then I know most of the people, most of the Muslims, the vast majority of the Muslims, they believe that Saum and Siyam are the same words and there is no difference. And inshallah, I am trying now to clarify the difference between these two terms, siyam and so. And then when you see the difference, then you know what is required when you are in the siyam and what is required when you are in the so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this word siyam because the word siyam was chosen to be in this verse because it is the ayah that is commanding us to, main, to keep fasting in this month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan, whole day we should be fasting. But then that fasting is this week. The word siyam, just to summarize first of all the word siyam and siyam, the difference is that when you say siyam, means it is to abstain from food and at the same time to abstain from all kinds of statements of sayings which are which may be irregular irrelevant and, and not important not necessary and not related to worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the same thing applies to your actions so when you are in the state of siyam, in the whole in the daytime you abstain from food. In the nighttime it's allowed that you eat. Then it is that you all most your statements should be limited to either you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying words of dhikr light to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to talk about Allah, to talk about ibadah and so on and so on to pray, to beg Allah. Those are your statements. But on the other hand, you stay away from all kinds of uh, antisocial words, like cursing people, insulting, assaulting them, backbiting, tattle telling. Those are already forbidden in Islam, but they are more forbidden in, when you are in the Sia. And when the same thing, you should stop or minimize what's called uh, that you say something which is like a joke, uh, choking, saying words that are not, uh, not giving you a very clear benefit and not necessary at that time. So those words, 
of um, teasing each other, saying statements which is like uh, just because of saying, those are all forbidden when you are in the sea. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has emphasized it in, in give special, Allah gives it special emphasis. Why? Because you stay away from food, you stay away from teasing and playing and talking around, saying whatever you want, all those things are prohibited. And then doing all those things are the same thing. When you are in that category, that means you are, you are in strong control. You are controlling yourself strongly, both when, if it is physically and psychologically, emotionally, mentally, all that are under strong control. When you are in that control, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it this special treat in this one. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah says, all deities are for mankind, except the siyam. The siyam is for me, and it is me who is giving the rewards of siyam. The hadith is that, كُلُّ عَمَلِ إِبْنَ آدَمْ لَهُ إِلَّا الصِّيَامِ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِبُ So siyam is for me, and I'm the one who is giving out that reward. Allah is saying it very clearly in that, uh, uh, that uh, hadith of Qudsi. So when you say that, and uh, you see that, and uh, Allah is using their siyam, and the ayah is siyam. So those two terms are siyam, and that's why Allah put it into that category. So let's come, to, uh, let's see about the song. The song, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Maryam, in the case of uh, Maryam, when she gave birth to Jesus, peace be upon him, and Allah is telling to her, فَكُلِي وَشْرَبِي وَقَرِّي عَيْنِي فَإِمَّا تَرَيِّنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا Allah is saying here, you Maryam, eat, drink, and enjoy as comfort with your eyes to see your baby. And feel happy, but say this one: If you meet with anyone, say to them, "Inni nazartu lirrahman sawma, falan ukalim al yawm insiya." I have taken covenant and promise with my Allah that I should be fasting today, so that I'm not talking to any one of you. I'm not talking to anybody because I'm fasting. So what is her fasting in that situation? That fasting is that she is not talking. She will be quiet only. She close her, just she's quiet, that's it. But she eats, Allah is telling us that in the same verse. He started saying to her, eat, which looks like eat as much as you can. Drink as much as you can, enjoy. But stop talking to people. That's your fasting. So she is fasting in that sense. And because she just gave birth, she just came out of the labor that was under the tree, and then she is not even, uh, she's not even allowed to fast at that time. So she is not fasting. Then that is fasting. Uh, you, are, you are fasting by, by not talking to the people. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in hadith, Ya ma'ashar al-shabaab, man istada'a minkum al-ba'a fal yatazawwaj. Faman lam yastadiq, fa alayhi islam. Fa inna lahu wujah, fa inna lahu wujah. The Prophet says, oh, the assembly of the youth, 
anyone of you who is who are, uh, is able or can afford to marry should marry now. If you are afraid of being the man and being the daily maintenance, your lunch and your dinner with your wife, you must marry. That's the order from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he said, exception, anyone, anyone who is, cannot afford that, who cannot pay any amount of mahal and cannot pay his the daily food, the daily prayer, then the second option is that فَعَلَيْهِ بِسْلَوْمْ Upon him is to fast, which is so, the word is so. فَإِنَّ لَهُ وِجَاءُ Because that song is protection for him. So there, you can see this song is, is lighter than the, the other ones, yeah. Because it could be that you fast by not eating food. But you may say some words of teasing to other people, saying some words like for fun and that stuff. But then it even could be translated to say that you should be quiet. If you cannot marry and if you do not, uh, cannot afford to marry, then you must be quiet. Do not talk to the girls. Do not talk about girls. Just be polite, moderate, and stop talking about marriage because you cannot even afford it. That could be also the meaning of the hadith. So there, if you look at the Quran in many places, when you compare the two uh, words of Som and Siyam, you can see the difference. And mostly even in the Siyam, it's used for the Som, well, the Som is used for when the fasting is Nafla. It's an extra work. So that one which is just extra and you are doing it uh, for the sake of doing sunnah, then mostly it's used the word sunnah, uh, the word so. But when it is the siyam which is the fard, the obligatory, the obligatory one, Allah uses siyam. And the hadith used siyam. So then that word siyam is the one that we are on it now, inshallah. So that siyam is the, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is counting what we say, <coughs> what we do, even what we think about, and what yeah. we eat and drink in the daytime. So all would you, the person who is in Siyam should be under that control. In another hadith, the, it is reported that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if someone talks to you, and that person is someone who talks for vain, for nothing, just say to them in the side, I'm fasting. So in that sense, you can feel it is just to say fasting, which is not like the siyam, the song. In conclusion, we have to look at the difference, the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in this verse, which is siyam. So if you are really performing siyam, then you must do it, perform it exactly the way it is, which is not limited to food, but all your characteristics, your behavior, your actions, your thinking, way of thinking, all that must be accompanied. They should be together. And when they are all together, then it is siyam. So, in all that sense, uh, brothers and sisters, we have to know the word siyam is is more even stronger than the word so and that is the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in this verse when Allah says Suyam Kutiba alaykum as Suyam Suyam is prescribed upon you so I want to advise myself and yourself 
that we should know that your eye is fasting, your finger is fasting, your stomach is fasting, your way of thinking mind is fasting, your tongue is fasting, your leg is fasting. That means all of them are under that shackle and in control. That is why the Siam controls all, all your body, outer part of your body and inner part of your body. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. My dear respectful brothers and sisters. In that first, yeah, yeah, I have a man who could have a little bit of a man who could have a I just highlighted the word siyam and convert it with the word so. Now let's go to the next ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Sharu Ramadan al Ladi Unzila fihi al Quran, Hudan lin Nasi. وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم شهر فليسول الله يسيني ذات فرس شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed there is هدى there is guidance and instruction in it which is linnas for the people. The Huda linnas wa bayyinatin min al huda And also clarification, bayyinat clearance, and purification. Min al huda wal furqan. To purify, to clarify the guidance itself. So the guidance itself, which was a touch, another touch was lit on it to be more clear well, for Qani and the criterion um, which shows that uh, differentiates between the right and wrong. So for men shahita, anyone of you who have seen that month, which doesn't mean that you will see it personally, but if others see it, then everyone others, other people saw it, then you also saw it. Faliyasumu, must fast. That fasting then Allah is showing us here the guidance. Let's put emphasis now on to the term وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ and clearance, clarification مِنَ الْهُدَى from the guidance. That, what is that? That is Allah is showing us that it is the Qur'an because Allah is saying وَالْفُرْقَانِ and the Qur'an which is the Qur'an. From there, we understand that the guidance comes when you apply it. You put your application, you submit your application to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through supplication. Your supplication will be accepted. And then that's how you get the guidance and the clearance. And how you do that is dhikrullah. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see the dhikrullah. The dhikrullah has been mentioned in every single action of ibadah. All the Islam, the pillars of Islam, from the Tawheed to the last, <coughs> there must be dhikr alongside with them. And also, in the faith, Iman, there is dhikr with them. Because when you have the, uh, the belief, the faith it comes from deep heart, and it's in your heart, but in order to put it out, you must make it action. So that action comes by your, that you say it verbally. So you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verbally saying, so then you put is that dhikrullah to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word dhikri, originally is the Qur'an. The Qur'an is dhikri, 
and Furqan and Quran also and Al Kitab, all those meanings are the Quran. And also then dhikri is anything related to remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is saying, Alladina Yadkurun Allah Piyaman Wakurudan wa Allah Junupihim. We are the Fakaruna for help the Samawati or Arabi, Rabbana Mahal of Tahada Badil. Those Alladina Yadkurun Allah Piyaman Wakurudan. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are sitting, when they are standing, wa ala jinubiman, when they are on, 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 on lying on bed, when they are even sleeping, not in deep sleep, but when they are lying like this, on their back or uh, on their right hand, then they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the time, they are in the remembrance of Allah, dhikrullah, that is dhikrullah. That you just remember first of all, and get it into your mind, and then after that you see, you praise Allah, saying Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. So when you see those statements which are glorifying Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and magnifying Allah, and then you put Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you give Him His right, and you you see it, that is dikrullah, and that dikrullah has been mentioned in the prayer when you are praying you are doing dhikrullah. That's a regular mandatory prayer. And the nafla prayer too. And when you are fasting, you are, Allah mentioned, that after Allah talks about that, the fast, how we prescribe the fasting upon us, he later is saying that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are performing a hajj, if we perform the hajj, Allah is saying, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ if you complete your all your regular stops when you finish them, then remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk about Allah, say about Allah in public and tell to each other, as you used to say about your parents. I mean, that is the human culture. When they come somewhere together in a crowd, they always say, oh, my father is this one, I, my genealogy is from that, 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 I came from that. Everyone is, says what the best to, uh, to talk about their parents and their grandparents. And Allah is saying, instead of talking about your parents and grandparents, just talk about Allah. Dhikrullah, remember the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the ibadat are, the dhikri is the fundamental of the ibadah. When Allah is talking about after this verse, after the first that I recited, Shah Ramadan al Unsila, at the end Allah says, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ يُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي When these people, when they, Allah says, if they remember me, and after that, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي if they ask you, my slave, my slave, if they ask you about me, they are asking the Prophet Muhammad tell them, فَإِنِّي أُجِيبُ الدَّاعِي إِذَا I am very close to them, and I answer the, uh, the, the prayer of those who really pray to me. Means there are people who pray, but that prayer is not going direct to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe it's going through someone to Allah. It's going first to someone and then going to Allah. Then Allah says, oh, so that application will not come to me. Because you have sent your application to the wrong office. But if you send your application directly to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah answers and you get your positive reply. In all that, the fasting, the whole point, uh, to conclude, the point of the fasting is that, first of all, stay away from taking any food, inhale anything that goes to your stomach, drinking anything, stop all that. And at the same time, you stop talking nonsense, talking in vain, talking for carelessly. All your statements must be all directly related to ibadah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or something important 
that you need it at that time. When it is that, then it is the siya. And after that, you control yourself, you are in training throughout the month. In the night time, you are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making traway, making tahajjud, all that, sitting down and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever you need. So then in the night time, you are in that status. And in the daytime, you are fasting, and at the same time, reciting the Quran, doing all kinds of good. On, on the other hand, you are paying charity. You are assisting other people. You are helping everyone. So you are contributing to the society. That is how you perform your siyam. And all the siyam, those, those are the requirements of the siyam. When you do all that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the dhikr life should be always there. When you are walking the street, you must keep saying la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, reciting du'as, those are, um, the, those are more common in the sunnah, begging Allah. In your own language, if you cannot read it in Arabic, then say it in your language. And then after that, and when you are sitting down, when you are, unless you are reciting Quran, then make that dhikr Allah. When you are driving, even when you are working in the hand, by hand, then in the mind and mouth you make you mention the dhikr Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, I advise myself and yourself that we understand the meaning of siyam exactly the way it is and we put it into action and then maintain it throughout our life. Not to do it only this year and then forget it next year, but to do it continuously. <laughs>